got $100 exiting 2023. Uh, and interestingly enough, that's not much different from what we would have said uh, three months ago at, at the start of the year. You know, let, let's remember a lot of the weakness in the oil market in the last 100 days has been because of concerns about demand for reasons that I think everybody understands. The monetary tightening around the world and more recently, the banking sector problems. But you know, none of these things are fundamentally going to change the trajectory of, of oil demand, physical demand. So you, you take that, you also superimpose the greater than expected discipline from OPEC, uh, as you noted a minute ago, and lo and behold, that's a recipe for triple digit oil prices. So, you know, people are noticing the continued uh, and further alignment of the Saudis uh, with uh, the Russians. That's uh, one thing. I, w I wonder what your thoughts are on that. And the second thing is, if oil does, I mean, with the surprise production cut, uh, further cuts and targets of 100, if not north of that, by the end of this year, what does this do to the G7 price cap on Russian oil? Let's remember the, the the price cap sixty dollars applies not to Brent, but applies to Ural's crude, and Ural's is trading about thirty dollar discount right now to Brent. In fact, it's been trading at a thirty dollar discount to Brent, really going back to the the early weeks of the war. So today, you know, Ural's is you know kind of in the in the mid fifties, so still still below that sixty dollar number. Now it if and when Brent gets towards $100 a barrel, you know, that will be an interesting bridge to cross. And I suspect there may need to be some flexibility on the part of the G7 governments to make sure that Russian barrels keep, keep on flowing. Because if they were to stop flowing, hypothetically, well, that's a recipe for really high oil prices and certainly more of an inflationary shock than any of those G7 policymakers would want to see. As far as uh, Russia and Saudi, look, Saudi uh, is 100% pragmatic and cynical. If Saudi needs to cooperate with the Kremlin to maximize Saudi's uh, revenues and yes. economic well-being, then guess what? That is precisely what the powers that be in Riyadh will do. They have absolutely no problem doing business with uh, with the Russians, notwithstanding yes. the war.